And again, guys, remember, every trader is looking at the market exactly the same way. There, there is no special lens or special you know, binoculars that one trader is seeing to everybody else. If the technology sector is weak, then everybody sees the technology sector is weak. If the technology is strong, there's no reason to fight it, go, go with momentum. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the markets this week. So if you look at uh, the scoreboard this week, there's really nothing um, in it that you could really decipher. In other words, if you're not an active trader, if you're just a passive investor, and you just looked at uh, the final tallies for the week, you know, plus or minus uh, a little bit, really didn't do anything. Uh, you had the Qs, uh, the NASDAQ 100, you know, down a little bit. Uh, the IWM this week uh, really, you know, really didn't show anybody one way or another uh, which way the market's going to flow because, again, it had a pretty good run off the bottom, uh, reclaimed a lot of supply zones, just kind of hovering about the last uh, reclaim. If you look at the SPY, uh, kind of the same thing, right? It just had this big, big run, and now we're kind of going sideways. Um, but, again, like everything else, like an onion, there's layers, right? There's just not an onion. There's layers to that onion that will tell you a bigger story. And the biggest catalyst uh, this week uh, was earnings, right? You had the big heavyweight uh, tech earnings this week. Last week's actually started uh, with Netflix that, you know, underwhelmed. Okay, I think, I think that's the best way of saying it. Uh, but this week you had Apple, right? You had Apple uh, and you had Amazon, right? And you had Amazon and you had Google and you had Microsoft, all the names. And if you look at uh, pretty much all of them, right? Especially a lot of names in the NASDAQ 100, uh, like, you know, like a Starbucks as well. There's a lot of names, right? There's definitely a lot of names. The one thing, and you'll see the common denominator in everything was that a lot of these companies really did well into earnings, right? So for example, Amazon had a ridiculous quarter, uh, 44%, I believe I read, uh, in revenue boost. Again, who doesn't love Amazon? Who didn't believe uh, that their numbers was, were going to be good? The only question was, how's the stock going to react? And just like in Amazon, just like in Microsoft, just like in Apple and a lot of other these names in the tech space, they had an initial really good move and then they sold it off. And, you know, again, you can make a case here. You could turn around and say, here's the bull case. You could turn around and say, well, these stocks had really, really big runs ahead of earnings. This is just profit taking. These are fantastic companies. They have still have fantastic growth rate and they will be okay two, three years down the line. But I don't think there's anybody who would take the other side of that argument. I agree with that 100%. You could definitely make uh, a case of, you know, stocks had a big run up, right? They did a, they did a fantastic job, uh, especially when the Qs reclaimed the 50 day moving average. And this, yeah, this is just maybe just a byproduct of literally, you know, literally stocks just needing a, a, a breath. And that's fine as well, right? And that's fine as well. The bear case scenario is, well, we had this big run, the earnings came out, yeah, you can make a case this was a, a sell the news type of scenario, but if the if the economy is recovering and, and the market uh, and the Fed is still printing money and there's all these other factors holding up and there's a buffer, well, why do you need profit taking, right? Maybe this is just a sign that the market needs a more of a bigger than rest, right? And you can make that case as well. And you start again peeling over, you know, those layers of the onion. You start looking at the other names that held a big significant portion of the key run-up. And that was the semiconductors. You guys remember the semiconductors? They, they led the market for a long, long time. And why the semiconductors are so significant was, well, is because they, they are predominantly representing uh, the components of the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, you know, the Intels of the world, the AMATs of the world, the NVIDIAs, so forth and so on. And if you look at the semiconductor chart, right, the SMA chart, well, this is the fourth close now, right? This is literally the fourth close on the 50-day moving average. You know, it held once, twice, three times, four times. And you turn around and say, well, how many times can you keep on uh, pushing through the levy before the dam breaks, right? And that's a very significant point because if you combine taking profits in non-semiconductor names 
and you combine that with semiconductors potentially taking down this bottom channel here, and now we pretty much reported all the big names into earnings, and you're turning around and say, well, what's left? Where is the catalyst, at least for the short term? And again, I, I'm always speaking devil's advocate. I don't, I don't believe in, you look, at, you, know, you look at a chart, you look at the economy, you look at fundamentals, and you make a broad statement. The market is very fluid. It switches, you know, it switches on a dime. You can go from bullish to bearish to bearish to bullish in a drop of a hat instantaneously, and the most important part is you have to be prepared. So it would be kind of naive for me to turn around and say, well, the numbers are still great. Everything's going to be great this week. Why? Right? The market spoke to you. They already told you. Uh, we sold off on good news, and we told you the biggest, uh, the biggest leaders on the past run were the semiconductors and are very, very close to breaking down these levels. And if you are an, an active trader, and again, we're just, again, we're just playing devil's advocate. We're not saying the market's going to tank. We're not saying the market's going to go higher. We just want to be prepared on both sides. So if we're taking all this information, we're, we're trying to process this data, it would be very naive for us to come Monday morning and say, okay, what are we buying? Right? What are we buying? Amazon got sold. Apple got sold. A Starbucks got sold. Netflix got sold. Right? All these names got sold. What are we buying on Monday? Right? Doesn't make sense. So we, we, we really need to be 100% uh, committed to reality, right? And you know, trade the market uh, that we have, not the market we want. And the one thing that I will tell you is it was very, very odd. And this is, you know, we started seeing that selling in after uh, strength for two, three days. But when Amazon couldn't push through the all time high, and you can see the all time high here, right? If you see the, the Amazon all time high chart of that 3553, uh, 54 level, once you saw that double top being put in, because Friday's highs was 54, and you saw the volume dry up at all time highs, you kind of knew that this was at least a pregnant pause for the technology bull case. And we did have a sell, you know, we did have a pretty aggressive sell-off. And you can see the reversal here on Amazon, you know, pretty aggressively uh, into the close and took down a lot of stocks uh, with it. Now, is it possible that this was just like, you know, a scenario that we have two, three days kind of a taking a breather and then we start resuming, you know, it's kind of in the middle of the week? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I would love to at least, I would love to for at least the cues. If that's going to be the case, I would love to see the cues at least touch this bottom level here of 334. Right now, we close at 338. I would love to see what happens on a macro case of the cues somewhere around the 334. Obviously, any close below 334, then again, if you believe in respect technical analysis, you can see how much room you have down. Uh, and again, nobody you know saying we're going to go back down to the 50-day moving average. But again, we just want to be prepared. So it's very, very important. We, we're conscious of levels. Uh, 334 is kind of uh, the line in the sand uh, in the queues, uh, if you look at the semiconductors, uh, the line in the sand, uh, sand in the semiconductors is this 241 level. So any close under 241 on the semiconductors are, is going to have uh, an impact on the queues. Because again, if you look at predominant uh, ways on the queues, you have the Intels of the world. So a lot of the semiconductors uh, are represented there. And the fact that we really have no, uh, we really have no catalyst uh, going into this week for, you know, just kind of the macro case, I, you know, I could see, you know, I could definitely see kind of a back test. Now, is there going to be names uh, that could wake up that already got hit? Absolutely. Like, look what happened, for example, on a name like Tesla, right? Tesla got sold off on earnings. And again, I don't even think the, the earnings were bad on Tesla, right? But they sold the stock and that's fine, right? You had to sell off on the stock and the stock came in from the highs in the last couple of weeks, from 780 all the way to 666, and we had a big reversal on Friday off the lows. I mean, look, you can make a case. Is it a one-day reversal, just kind of a dead cat bounce, and it's going to be kind of sold off with everything else uh, going into this week? Possible, right? Possible. Or is this kind of like, okay, you know what? We, we're, we're back on track. Tesla's a monster. Uh, if it reclaims the 10-day moving average, then you have a lot of room to the upside into the 726. And obviously, anything any close over 726 uh, starts a new cycle of potentially going back uh, to that 800 level. So that's on the table, right? So that's definitely on the table. And again, we don't need to guess. We need to just kind of see how Tesla is going to wake up on Monday morning, have a theme going on. So if they do get rejected back to the 10-day moving average, you know it's possible to go lower. But if they start reclaiming Friday's levels, then obviously we have a next uh, leg up. And even a name like Netflix, who uh, was you know the, the whole 
uh, fire started, right, uh, of the whole uh, technology earnings uh, two Mondays ago. And they, they gapped down. And now they're just, they, they kind of woke back up on Friday as everything is getting sold off. But, it, but it's very, very hard to get excited to turn around and say, well, if Netflix, you know, Netflix is now demonstrating a strength. Well, de Netflix was demonstrating weakness as the market was going up. So how can you possibly get excited about Netflix demonstrating sh weakness, uh, strength on a dead cat bound situation if there's a potential for semiconductor uh, and the cues to spill over back to the downside. So there's a level here that we're going to be watching on Monday. And if this level gets reclaimed, then yeah, you maybe have a multiple day move back to the upside into the 320s level on Netflix is kind of a counterplay, kind of like Tesla, the same thing. Or if Netflix gets rejected at the 10 day moving average, then we have it a very, very specific area and then say, well, well, this was the dead cat bounce. It hit the 10 day moving average. It got rejected. Now there's a very specific level there. And if it doesn't take that out, we can go short using the day's high as our out. So there's a lot of scenarios on the table here. And if you go through uh, your charts over the weekend, you'll see there's not a lot of really great longs that stand out, right? There's some names. Uh, Facebook, for example, is it possible it could have a day uh, to run or kind of what I call a second day play? Absolutely, right? It's always on the table, especially early if there's strength in the market. Because again, Facebook did have a great quarter, right? They piggybacked off the whole uh, customer acquisition click at the click space and the same thing where Google uh, took advantage of. So it had a monster move on Thursday and it rested on Friday. So is it possible that Facebook kind of you know wakes up, uh, opens lower, shakes some trees, reclaims level and starts making move back to the upside? 100%. That's on the table as well. So we have to have an open mind going into uh, Monday's session. I think if you go through your charts, you'll, you will notice there's a lot of ugly looking charts out there, especially in the tech space. That's why I was, you know, when, I started, uh, when I started this broadcast, I, I kept on saying, what are you dying to buy on Monday, right? If you go through your charts and you put in your work this weekend, and if you're, and if you're really doing your work, you'll see exactly the same thing uh, that I'm looking at. And again, guys, remember, every trader is looking at the market exactly the same way. There, there is no special lens or special you know, binoculars that one trader is seeing that everybody else. If the technology sector is weak, then everybody sees the technology sector is weak. If the technology is strong, there's no reason to fight it. Go, go with momentum. Uh, this week, uh, you don't have major players reporting earnings. You do have PayPal on Wednesday. Uh, let me just go, go through it really quickly. Uh, you got Pfizer on Tuesday. We'll see exactly um, how the vaccines will help. Uh, you have PayPal, Uber on Wednesday, and Thursday looks like kind of the bigger uh, the bigger picture in technology. You got Roku, okay. You got Square uh, and the fake meat, right? You have Beyond uh, coming out as well. So the major earnings are out of the way, and now we just have to see because of there's there's a lack of kind of catalyst, at least short term catalyst, how the market, um, you know, how the market reacts to uh, kind of a non biting situation, just kind of trading on their own uh, merits. We'll see what happens there. So let me give you some ideas uh, that I kind of do like uh, for this week. Um, you know, first of all, Peloton, I, I caught a short on this a couple of days ago. Peloton does not look good, right guys? It just absolutely doesn't look good. I have a Peloton in my house. I got it five years ago. Full disclosure, I think I've been on it six times in five years. Love the product. The seat, if you're a guy, is just a tad small. Again, Having you know, having a, a prostate exam every single time um, I go on the Peloton is not exactly the greatest thing in the world. Again, maybe some for others, but not my cup of tea. Um, but if you look at the Peloton chart, you could tell it broke down below this 99 level two days in a row below the five day moving average. And this whole channel here is on deck. So that if there is a significant or any type of pull in the market, you have to look at weakness. You have to look at stocks that potentially never rally with the last move. Uh, are underneath supply for multiple days. And if they start really con confirming and the cues get hit, well, this is the, one of the names you, you definitely want to look at. And Intel as well. Again, this is the leader uh, of the semiconductors. They came, you know, they came uh, with earnings and they were already weak into earnings. It wasn't like uh, Intel was this monster move into earnings. But again, you could definitely make a case that, hey, it did have a big run-up. So they, make, they made sales on Intel the same way they made on Microsoft. But again, it's the same thing. If semiconductors start... Uh, breaking down and watch, you know, watch Intel at this level. Maybe it starts breaking down with it. Um, you know, Tesla, I'm watching. You know, I'm definitely te watching Tesla. Maybe there's a multiple day run on this thing. Uh, maybe there's a multiple day 
It did reclaim the five-day moving average. It did reclaim the 10. I didn't think the earnings were bad to begin with. Uh, so maybe Tesla, you know, it has its own bull cycle. Remember, Tesla doesn't need a reason uh, to rally and sell off. That's why it's the greatest stock ever. It, it, when it goes, it goes with tremendous option flow. You saw on Friday they were coming for the 740s and the 750s uh, for this this week's expiration. So if they're going to get paid, you know, they, then some levels are definitely need to get um, re you know reclaimed. So I'm definitely watching Tesla. But if it gets rejected off the supply, then we have a clear channel back to short. And again, we're watching for you know day uh, day two maybe run. On Facebook, had a big run Friday, uh, Thursday, rested on Friday. Maybe it resumes on Monday. Um, and Zoom, I, I know Zoom is great and, and everything is you know wonderful with Zoom. Uh, there was actually a big, big call buyer that came in. I believe it was for the 380s and the 390 uh, short-term expiration from Zoom. But and, I, and again, I have to check their earnings date. But you can't really ignore this chart, right? Look how close this thing is to really breaking down. And, and, and once we establish kind of a range, a trend uh, for Monday morning, if, if there is any type of weakness, you know, names like Zoom, names like Peloton, uh, you definitely want to uh, pay attention to. So that's it, guys. That's it. We're kind of set up uh, open-minded. Um, you know, anything can happen. Obviously, the macro case on the queues is still very, very strong. We're still way above the 50-day moving average, but it doesn't need to translate into this week's session. It doesn't need to translate into Monday's session. We can still have weakness and we can still take advantage of it if levels start to confirm. So guys, have a great weekend, everybody. God bless. I love everybody. Thank you for all your kind words, your support, and always great feedback. I wish everybody the best of love, like, and everything in between. God bless, and I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.